Hi, so now we are going to be continuing with our previous video where we are looking, we were looking into the different microcontroller categories. Now we are going to classify them based on the instruction set. So previously we had saw how we had seen how to categorize them based on the memory and based on the number of bits available. Now we are going to categorize them based on the instruction sets available. As I told you, CIAC stands for complex instruction set computing and RIAC stands for reduced instruction set computing. So CISC is a common, CISC, uh, uh, complex instruction set computer. It allows a programmer to use one instruction in place of many simpler instructions. So you can combine simpler instructions and make it as a complex instruction. So if there are uh, five instructions to do a particular task, you can build an instruction that can do all the five of them with a single word, a single instruction over here. So that is the advantage of CISC. And uh, next instruction type is a RISC. It stands for the reduced instruction set computer. So what we saw over here, the opposite of that, you are going to break an entire complex instruction into simpler instruction. So this type of instruction set reduces the design of the microprocessor for industry standards. Okay, as, uh, as you know, it is breaking down the complexity of the microprocessor. It allows each instruction to operate on any register. So you are having individual small instructions available. So individual instructions will be able to access the register individually. So that is the advantage over here. Or use any addressing mode and simultaneous access to programming and data. So that is the advantage of this. From below example, risk systems shorten the execution time by reducing the clock cycles. Risk is the one that is most advantageous for a number of clock cycles for instructions based on that. This system shortens execution time. That is its advantage. It shortens the execution time by reducing the number of instructions per program. So the entire program point of view, CISC is the best one because it reduces the execution time. But RISC systems, it reduces the number of clock cycles required to uh, execute one particular instruction. So instruction wise, RISC is better. Whole program wise, you will consider CISC to be better. The uh, number of lines required in a program surely uh, will be less when it comes to a CISC based uh, program. RISC gives a better execution than CISC. So as you are individually able to control each register over here, RISC is always better than CISC. But if you are not familiar with the architecture involved in a microcontroller or processor, whatever it may be, the best way to go in with is with the particular CISC type of programming. If you are aware of the architecture of a microcontroller, know the internal registers available there. If you are able to access them individually, then you will go for the type of architecture which is the RISC over here, instruction set. So, coming into our next one, we have different microcontrollers here classified based on the architecture. So there are two types of architecture as I told you. One is the Harvard architecture and the other one is the Von Neumann architecture. In the Harvard architecture, separate storage and signal buses are provided for different set of instruction and data. You have separate buses for storage and signal buses. That is the uh, Harvard architecture. This architecture has an entire data storage within the CPU. There is no access available for ins instruction storage as data. You cannot do it for storage purposes of data. The architecture provides simultaneous access to an instruction and data stored inside the internal bus of a microcontroller. Simultaneously, you can transfer instructions and data that is stored inside the particular microcontroller. That is the Harvard architecture. Whereas coming to a von Neumann architecture, this architecture was proposed by scientist John von Neumann. In this architecture for both instructions and data, single path data or bus is present. So you cannot do both at the same time. When it came to our particular Harvard architecture, you could access both at the same time, the data and the instructions. Instruction is your program. So when the program is being fetched, later only you will know whether you need to fetch a data. So both will be fetched and needs to be fetched when it comes to a particular program. In Harvard, you can fetch both the instruction and the data at the same time. Whereas in Monument architecture, it, the architecture, both instruction and data, you have a single data path. So which means only one can be accessed at a time. So the CPU performs single operation at a time, either as I told you, either the address is being generated or the instruction or the data. So it either performs a read write operation on data or fetches a set of instruction from the memory. So it can either uh, deal only with data 
or it can only be with the instruction one at a time that is its uh, one human architecture hence instruction fetch and data transfer operation cannot occur simultaneously so you can understand that the one human architecture is a slower process compared to the Harvard architecture so the advantage of Harvard architecture is it is faster compared to one human but what is the advantage of one human you have a common you have a single data path over here so the area that is required in building this particular architecture is going to be smaller so smaller in size it is going to be one human whereas here you have double the size because you have separate access for in, uh, particular instructions and separate accessing buses for your particular data so the area it is going to be increasing over here so they have their advantages and disadvantages and depending upon your application if you want a, 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 an application that needs to work fast you will go for a Harvard architecture based microcontroller if you do not worry about the speed of operation but you worry about the area that uh, takes for that microcontroller then you will be going with the one human architecture so depending on your applications you will, you will classify you will uh, you will need to purchase the microcontroller of your choice so next we are going to classify the microcontrollers depending upon the service provider who is providing these microcontrollers so the first one and the most common one and the one that we are using in our particular iot system subject over here is the avr avr microcontroller is developed by atmel service provider atmel is the provider for avr avr architecture is based on harvard architecture so it is based on harvard architecture which you saw earlier it is based on the risk type of instruction set so the architecture used over there is the harvard and it is using the reduced instruction set over here AVR is not an acronym, so please remember AVR does not have a full form. Okay, clear like RISC has a full form of reduced instruction set computer. AVR does not have any full form out there. It is not an acronym, it is just a name given to the RISC architecture based uh, microcontroller. That is what it uses a RISC based uh, architecture out there. That is why it is called as AVR. And the next uh, common one and the old fellow is the PIC microcontroller. It also uses the Harvard architecture. PIC is the uh, acronym for Peripheral Interface Controller. And this type of microcontroller supports programming in C, assembly language, and basic C. So it can be done using CISC and it can be, you can program it using RISC also. Assembly level language is an example for RISC type of uh, programming. Next one is Hitachi. Hitachi microcontroller belongs to the h8 family of the microcontrollers it is a name used for the large family and it has the 8-bit 16-bit and the 32-bit microcontroller and it is developed from renaissance technology found in the early 1990s with the hitachi semiconductors and next one the brand is motorola motorola microcontroller is strongly integrated in microcontroller that is used for high performance data manipulation this you will not be normally using in your day-to-day uh, programming type of uh, applications these are the ones that you normally see in your uh, gadgets so uh, data manipulation operation microcontroller unit uses a system integration sim uh, system integration module you know your sim card time processing unit tpu and the queued serial communication qsm so all of these are available in the motorola over here so now we will be looking into a second topic of our particular second unit which is Arduino uh, what are their types and we will be specifically looking into the Arduino Uno architecture so what are the different types of Arduino Arduino comes under the AVR family for your knowledge please remember under a you in this Arduino board please remember it's not a microcontroller it is a board over here in this Arduino board you will be using an AVR micro, microcontroller okay so now we'll be looking into the different Arduino. We'll see what is an Arduino, what are the types of Arduino, and we'll be looking into Arduino Uno, the one that is over here. Okay. Arduino board was designed in the Iberia Interaction Design Institute intended for students without a background in electronics and programming. So it was a uh, it was a project that was designed for people who did not have background in electronics. They did not they do not need to know much about electronics and they do not require knowledge of programming so people from any domain can do this programming and uh, interfacing using Arduino that is the idea behind this Arduino this board started altering to adapt to new requirements and challenges it had the flexibility of alteration 
and it's separating its presence from other 8-bit ports to products for IoT so application so it it, it, it differentiates itself because based on that particular uh, 8-bit uh, boards that are available in the market because of its flexibility and those are the one, applications uh, that are available are in internet of things 3d printing wearable devices and embedded surroundings whatever you see around you all boards are entirely open source so anyone can access this particular uh, you don't have to be a premium member for that you need to have a board with you you can go into the particular arduino id uh, website and you can start your uh, arduino id software tool and you can do your programming it's an open source and uh, users to build them separately and finally adapt them to their exact needs this entire board can the architecture is available on the arduino website so you can alter the uh, skeleton of this particular design and you can print your own pcb based on that depending upon your uh, application so that is the advantage the open source over here so they are more generous in that over there they have specified the uh, uh, how to build this particular board next arduino board has been used for making different engineering projects and different applications the arduino software is very simple to use for beginners that is the main advantage over here compared to any other microcontroller you need some prior knowledge about how to use it but here less knowledge is required and enough and it runs on multiple platforms like windows linux mac etc and coming to next one what are the functions of the arduino board Flexibility of the Arduino board is enormous so that one can do anything they can imagine. If you have the corresponding sensor and you have the uh, courage and you have the uh, will to do anything, you can do it using Arduino. That is the main advanced uh, function of this Arduino. This board can be connected very easily to different modules such as obstacle sensors, presence detectors, fire sensors, JSM module, GPS modules, etc. All of these can be interfaced to this particular board. Main function of the Arduino board is to control electronics through reading inputs, that is your sensors, and changing into outputs because this board works like a tool. Okay, it is just a tool over here, this board. And you need to con uh, connect it to an uh, output interface device where you can see the outputs that are visible. This board is also used to make different electronic projects in the field of electronics, electrical, robotics, you can name it. There are many domains in which these applications can be used. And next one, advantages. What are the advantages of using Arduino? Arduino also makes uh, simpler the working process of the microcontroller. Normally, a microcontroller was complex in its working, but now things have made, been made very simple with the help of this particular microcontroller. It gives some advantages over other systems for teachers, students, and beginners. So, yeah, you can see that you have a forum dedicated for that where people share their projects. So, you don't have to build anything from the scratch. Everything is available. So, the advantages of them are all there. Next, they have the advantages that they are inexpensive in nature. Cross-platform, that is, you can use it in multiple uh, projects and it, you, can, okay, you can change the... Uh, uh, particularly where you can use it in windows mac whatever platform you require and this simple clear programming environment the programming over here is very simple that it is not complex as uh, other uh, high level languages because they use only the embedded uh, based uh, of arduino programming over here so it is much more simple and clear and uh, open source and extensible software so you you have the architecture of the microcontroller you can build one on your own and you have the extensible software over here which which uh, serves its specific purpose over here and the open source with respect to its extensible hardware so both the extensible software is available and the one with the extensible hardware is available over here so these are the main advantages of why you should be using Arduino microcontrollers compared to other microcontrollers available in the market okay. see you guys in the next topic